What are some skills you think a pilot should work on when aspiring to become a captain? This is one of the questions I will answer today, so stay put. Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magnar Nordahl, I am an Air and Captain and Instructor. And this is Q&A number 16. And let's go straight into it. Hello Magnar. If you could go back in time, what aircraft would you most like to try flying? Spitfire, DC-3, Concorde, etc. Well, you already mentioned it. Number one on my list is the Spitfire. There are many reasons for that. First of all, it's a legendary aircraft from the Second World War. The elliptical wing is uh, famous. And it's all also possible to fly it today because there are some two cities flying around. So the Spitfire is on my bucket list. Hi Captain. So on the ATR you generally also apply reduced thrust on takeoff, but you actually mention power instead of thrust. So what is the official terminology for reduced thrust takeoff on the ATR? Um, the normal terminology is power, because propeller aircraft um, are different from uh, jet aircraft. On jet aircraft we say thrust, but on propeller aircraft we say power. The power is uh, RPM multiplied with the torque, just like a car engine. Uh, normal takeoff power is what you would call reduced thrust for a jet engine. And for ATR, the standard takeoff power is 90%. You also have reduced climb power settings similar to the jets. Um, we have climb power, which is standard power for climb. And after takeoff, we set climb power when at least 400 feet above the runway. It depends on the terrain and obstacles. So. That reduces the RPM of the propeller, which reduces the noise. We don't need noise uh, abatement procedures. The turboprop is already very quiet. Okay. Next, what are the procedures for setting up an LPV approach on ATR 600? LPV means localized performance with vertical guidance, and that requires SBAS. Um, and a modification to the aircraft. This is not available where I am flying today, so I have in fact never flown an SPAS based procedure like uh, LPV. When you have it available, that option will be in the MCDU when you set up the approach. Simple as that. Yes, if anyone. Hello, Magnar. What do you think about FS2 crew release? Are you happy with the result? Have we tried flying MSFS with it? Yeah, I have tested it out and now you have the option to fly with me as your co-pilot. And for me it feels a bit strange flying with myself, but in fact it's really fun. So yeah, I like the result. Hi Magnar, I have a question. On the checklist, forward and aft smoke. It says cab and airflow off. I am unsure to what to press because I know it's different from the airflow button, which is just high and norm. Where can I find the switch for this? This switch is only available on the cargo version of the ATR. So the passenger version has only the first part of the checklist and then you have the cargo version where this uh, switch is mentioned. If you fly the cargo version, can you please send me a picture of the panel? That would be very nice. Thank you. Hello Magnai. What's the longest route you ever took? Uh, not on ATR, but on Jetstream 31. I have flown seven hours. That was a position flight from Norway to Sicily in Italy, where we had a wet lease operation. That took about seven hours. We had a fuel stop in Stuttgart. The longest shorter flight was from uh, Haugesund in Norway to St. Petersburg in uh, Russia. That took about three and a half hours non-stop. 
and we had 100 kilos extra fuel and we landed with that 100 extra longest commercial scheduled flight was from Damascus to Cairo and that took also three and a half hours okay hi Magnar my question is what are your thoughts of having hotel mode on ATR aircraft compared to having an APU? What are the benefits and drawbacks? And what do you prefer? Well, the benefits are cost saving for maintenance and also purchase. And you have a weight saving. The drawbacks are that the exhaust from the engine may interfere with the door areas especially if the wind is coming from your right side. The airports where you are forced to park in a certain direction. And if the passenger had to board through the exhaust gas, it's not very comfortable. Uh, another drawback is the tailwind limitation. Again, you may have to be parked in a certain direction at some airports. And if you have a tailwind more than 10 knots, you cannot use hotel mode at all. And that means you have no air condition. I prefer, I have mixed feelings. Uh, I understand that cost savings are important for the companies, but sometimes it would have been nice in an APU, but I also know APUs can fail. And my current employer, they have uh, now a mixed fleet dash eight, which are now replaced with ATRs. And what I see is the APUs, they are often inoperative, they are very expensive to repair or replace. So then I prefer the hotel mode, absolutely. Hi Magnar, what tips would you have for a first time first officer after passing the line check? I have heard that a lot of new first officers have trouble on the first OPC after training. Yes, that is true. Because your typewriting is a very intensive part of your career. You go through so many things and, it, and after you finish the simulator check, you do a base training, which is just some uh, landing patterns. And then you start to fly regular uh, flights with passengers or cargo. And in 99.9% .9 of the time, everything is normal, right? The aircraft doesn't break down like in the simulator, so the emergency procedures start to fade away. And then you return to the simulator, you get a big shock because suddenly you discover, oh, I don't remember this. Oh, how do I do that? So that's the big shock because you have to know your all the memory actions for engine flame out, engine fire, emergency descent, etc. Uh, the only way to prevent this shock on the first simulator session is to regularly repeat, read the quick reference handbook and read through the procedures. You can take a couple of them uh, every day. Just so you repeat, 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 because every flight you are supposed to know all of those. Okay, you never stop learning. Uh, second question, what are some skills you think a pilot should work on when aspiring to become a captain? Of course, this will be different for every pilot, but what are some things you see that first of, but what are some things you see that hold first officers back? I will say uh, stagnation. You are in a comfort zone you're happy flying as a first officer, you don't have to take decisions, you can listen to advice for the captain. But the company wants you to become a future captain, right? So you have to develop, work with yourself. Don't stop staying in that uh, nice sofa mode, because uh, that is not where you should be. You should work towards the captain's seat. So when you are the next on the list, you should be ready. Because if you're not ready, the company will say, sorry, 
you are not uh, qualified yet. And there can be many reasons for that. For example, it can be your skill, your knowledge, not only about the aircraft or the route, but also the rules. How often do you read your operation manual part A? Hmm? Do you really know what's written there? Chapter 8 is huge. And you should go through it regularly, just as you also repeat the procedure for the aircraft. So, I would say lack of skill and knowledge might prohibit you from becoming the next captain. And also, you need to show leadership. Yes, it can be difficult as a first officer, but you can show responsibility. You can show management. You can take initiatives. That is what the company wants you to do. They don't want you to be a servant sitting in the right seat. If you have a captain with that attitude, then the company should uh, let you fly with another captain, absolutely. But okay, that is all for this time. If you have more questions about aviation, please write them down behind here. I will answer them. And until then, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning.